Every year, more than 12 billion bullets are produced worldwide, enough to give every person on Earth a couple of rounds. That scale alone shows how important and widespread this tiny piece of engineering really is. But then you might wonder, how does something so small get built? And which step matters the most in bringing it to life? Well, we will uncover all that here at The Process World. The story of bullets begins over a thousand years ago in China, when gunpowder was first discovered in the 9th century. That breakthrough changed warfare forever. Early firearms were crude, and the projectiles they fired were nothing more than small lead balls. Muskets and cannons relied on these simple spheres, which were heavy, messy, and far from accurate. As centuries passed, innovations started to take shape. The development of rifling, grooves cut inside a gun barrel, gave bullets a spinning motion, making them far more accurate than before. Then came the Minier ball in the mid-1800s, a conical lead projectile with a hollow base. It gripped the rifling, flew straighter, and hit harder, changing the battlefield during wars like the Crimean War and the American Civil War. The late 19th century took things further with Edward Rubin's copper-jacketed bullet. By surrounding the lead core with a copper layer, these new bullets could handle higher speeds without fouling the barrel. This single innovation paved the way for the modern projectiles we know today, sharper, faster, and designed for specific purposes like hunting, defense, or piercing armor. But how exactly are they made? Well, before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now moving on. Every bullet story begins long before it takes shape on the factory line. It starts with the materials chosen to build it. At the core is lead, a dense and soft metal that provides the weight and impact needed. Lead has been used for centuries because it's easy to work with and powerful when it strikes a target. To strengthen this soft center, factories turn to copper. Rolled into thin sheets, cut and pressed into jackets, copper surrounds the lead and gives the bullet durability, cleaner performance in the barrel, and the ability to travel at higher speeds. Some bullets are made for specialized jobs like cutting through armor or heavy barriers. In those cases, harder metals such as steel or tungsten are introduced. These materials are exceptionally strong and are shaped with precision machining to exact dimensions, giving the bullet the power to punch through protective layers. Then there are the components that bring the round to life. Propellant, usually nitrocellulose or a nitrocellulose nitroglycerin blend, is chemically stabilized and turned into a fast-burning powder that produces the gas pressure to fire the bullet forward. At the base sits the primer, a tiny metal cup filled with sensitive chemicals. The moment it's struck, it ignites the propellant charge above it and starts the chain reaction. Once these raw ingredients are ready, the factory begins shaping them into usable parts. Lead is melted and cast into ingots before being extruded into wires or molded into specific shapes. Copper sheets are rolled flat, cut into small discs, and drawn into cups that will become the jackets. Every measurement is precise, because even the slightest inconsistency could affect the bullet's accuracy. By the end of this stage, the core, jacket, propellant, and primer are all prepared and waiting to be assembled. But before a bullet can ever be fired, it needs a strong home, the cartridge case. This is the part that holds the primer, propellant, and bullet together as one complete round. Most cases are made from brass, chosen because it's durable, corrosion-resistant, and easy to shape under heavy pressure. The process starts with flat brass sheets that are punched into small discs. These discs are drawn through a series of dies, stretching and shaping them into cups. With each pass, the walls of the cup grow taller and thinner until they take on the familiar cylindrical shape of a cartridge case. To keep the metal from becoming brittle during this intense process, the cases are periodically annealed or heat-treated, which restores strength and flexibility. As the case takes shape, important features are added. The base is formed to include the primer pocket, where that small explosive cap will sit. The rim or groove at the bottom is cut so that the firearms extractor can grip it and pull the spent case out after firing. At the opposite end, the case neck is formed. This is the narrow section that will eventually grip the bullet tightly. By the end of this stage, the cartridge shell is ready to serve its role as the foundation of the round. 
Every groove, thickness, and dimension matters because a case that isn't perfect can cause jams, misfires, or dangerous pressure buildup when fired. These cases now wait to be paired with the primer, propellant, and bullet core in the next phase of the journey. This is the stage where all the prepared parts come together to form a complete round. It begins with the bullet itself. The lead core, already shaped or extruded, is carefully inserted into the copper jacket. Machines press the two tightly together so there's no room for gaps or weakness. Depending on the design, the bullet is then shaped further. A sharp, pointed nose for speed and range, or a hollow tip for controlled expansion on impact. Once the bullet is ready, it moves to the cartridge case. The first step is seating the primer into the pocket at the base of the case. This tiny component may be small, but it's the spark that starts everything once a gun is fired. Next comes the propellant. Powder is measured with incredible precision, down to fractions of a grain, because too much or too little changes velocity, accuracy, and safety. Each case is filled with exactly the right amount. The bullet is then pressed into the open neck of the case. Seating depth is critical. Even being off by a fraction of a millimeter can affect how the round chambers and performs. Once in place, the case mouth is crimped tightly around the bullet, locking it in so it won't shift under pressure. Every movement in this stage is driven by accuracy and reliability. The goal is to make a cartridge that feeds smoothly into a firearm, fires with consistent power, and leaves nothing unpredictable. At the end of this process, what started as raw materials has become a fully assembled round ready for the next step. Now before a round is considered complete, it goes through a finishing stage that gives it polish, protection, and reliability. The first step is cleaning. During assembly, tiny traces of lubricant, metal shavings, or powder dust can remain on the surface. The rounds are run through polishing machines that tumble them together, leaving the brass cases bright and smooth. This isn't just for appearance. A clean cartridge chambers more easily and reduces wear on the firearm. Next comes coating or lubrication. Some bullets receive a light wax coating, while others use advanced finishes like molybdenum disulfide or even electroplating. These treatments reduce friction as the bullet moves through the barrel, improve consistency between shots, and help prevent fouling that can build up after repeated firing. Every finish is chosen with performance in mind. A training round may only need a basic protective coat, while high-precision ammunition for competition or military use could get a more specialized treatment. These coatings also add an extra layer of protection for storage, keeping rounds stable and reliable even after months or years in a box or crate. By the time this stage is complete, each round is not only functional but also refined. It's polished, protected, and ready to face the rigorous quality checks that will confirm it performs exactly as designed. No matter how well a bullet is built, it has to prove itself before it leaves the factory. This is where testing and quality control come in, and it's one of the most critical stages in the entire process. Every batch of ammunition is checked for uniformity. Machines and technicians measure the weight of the bullet, the thickness of the jacket, the seating depth in the case, and even the diameter down to fractions of a millimeter. These tiny details decide whether a round will fire smoothly or cause problems in the chamber. Random samples are then pulled from the production line and test fired. The results tell manufacturers everything, the velocity of the bullet, the pressure created inside the chamber, and the accuracy of its flight. If anything is even slightly off from the standards, adjustments are made right away. The process also includes inspecting the appearance of each round. Brass cases must be free from dents or scratches, primers must be seated evenly, and the crimp around the bullet has to be firm. Even the shine of the casing matters because it signals the cartridge is clean and ready to perform. At the end, only the rounds that meet strict performance standards move forward. The rest are rejected, melted down, or recycled back into raw material. Once the bullets have passed every inspection, the final stage is packaging. This step is more than simply boxing them up. It's about protecting the rounds, labeling them correctly, and preparing them for transport. 
The bullets are first sorted by caliber and type. Machines or workers carefully place them into trays or boxes designed to keep each round secure and separated. This prevents dents, scratches, or accidental discharge during storage and shipping. Retail packaging usually comes in cardboard or plastic boxes, each clearly marked with details like caliber, bullet weight, type, and the number of rounds inside. For larger orders, such as military or law enforcement contracts, the rounds are packed in bulk. Boxes are stacked into cartons, crates, or even sealed metal ammunition cans. These containers are designed to handle rough conditions and often include moisture protection like gaskets or desiccants to keep the ammunition safe over long periods. Every package carries important labeling. Lot numbers allow manufacturers and users to track exactly when and where the ammunition was made. This makes quality control easier and provides accountability if an issue ever arises. By the time this step is finished, the rounds are ready to leave the factory floor and head to warehouses, stores, or directly to military and police units. And that's it. Now to you, with all this engineering packed into such a small object, what other everyday item do you think hides a process just as complex and surprising? Comment down below as you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos like this one.